Experience Life, what's up? Good to see you and want to welcome those of you watching at Church Online, our downtown campus in Amarillo campus. We are pumped that you're here with us right now as well for Awakening Number 2. And in this series, we've been sharing stories about people from the Bible, people from our church who've been awakened by God. Because he, here's the thing, many people are asleep spiritually. And so it's encouraging to hear stories about people who've been awakened by God because it helps us realize that maybe the same thing could happen to us too, that God could wake us up, set our hearts, set our lives on fire for him. And so last weekend, we talked about a guy from the Bible who was awakened by God and then immediately got baptized. And so we prayed for the same thing, that God would wake people up spiritually and for people to get immediately baptized, going public with their relationship with Jesus. I want you to check out this video and see what happened last week question for you today at all of our campuses is have you been awakened do you have a story of being awakened by God and when you were awakened your life was changed because if not I got good news for you your story can begin today these are days of turning we will call and call out for the saints of this world Ooh, oh. For the changing, we rise, we seek them. For the prophets to call out into the world, oh, we ignite the changing. As people go to church, I want you to cheer for those today that are choosing to go public. They want the world to know that they're followers of Jesus. Come on, God's calling you. It's your time. Today is your day. This could be a new day for you. He wants to do something awesome in your life. Don't resist him any longer. God's doing something in some people's lives today. The time has come. Oh, man, come So. incredible last weekend between all of our campuses we had over 4,000 people attend experience life we had 400 people get baptized and we had over 100 people that committed their life to Christ I don't know about you but that is a great way to celebrate five years at experience life incredible stories have been pouring in. Uh, we got tons that were, pour that were coming in through Facebook. One lady said, I got spontaneously baptized today to publicly declare my faith in God with some of the most amazing friends. So incredibly thankful to have a God that loves me unconditionally each and every day through the good and the bad. Another guy said, thank you for yesterday. I feel awesome. I wanted to stay dunked. Yesterday was so amazing and I hope the feeling lasts forever. I felt a battle inside and, and don't know what happened, but we, as we walked down the aisle and got in line, I, I thought my chest was going to burst open. My family is so lost like I had been, and so I hope I can get them there tonight. Another lady said, I invited a girl I work with to church this weekend. She went to the 5 o'clock service last night as a first-time guest. She got out of her chair, recommitted her life to Christ, and got baptized. Isn't that amazing? Another guy said, I committed my life to Jesus a couple of years ago, but I've never really taken my next step to get baptized. 
I've always said that the next time they do baptisms, I need to sign up, but I never do. Today, our amazing church did an on-the-spot baptism, and I did it, and I'm pumped about my new walk with Jesus. Another lady said, I was so excited to see how God is working in everyone's life and even happier to see my husband of 11 years finally commit his life to Jesus and show the world that he's a believer. Isn't that incredible? The stories, that, you know, just keep coming in. Another guy said, thank you, Eli. You gave me the courage today to get up and take that next big step in my life. Now I'm baptized and I feel free from everything that was weighing me down. Another lady said, I've been working really hard to get right with Christ lately and thought about being baptized, but wanted to wait until I was a better person. But Chris said today, don't wait. If you believe in him, do it today. And right then and there, I walked to the back of the rink, changed clothes, and got dunked. I was saved today, and God is so good. That's just another powerful story. Another lady said, I was baptized as a baby, and again, when I wanted to be cool in elementary or junior high, I've been trying to become closer to God and on the verge of checking the box to commit my life to Christ. I almost didn't go to church today, but something pushed me to go. Today, I committed my life to Christ and got baptized. Another lady said, my heart feels too big for my chest. He answered my prayers in his time and according to his plan. My son and my husband both committed their lives to Christ today and were baptized side by side. Isn't that incredible? Let's just thank God for the stories of life change. Absolutely amazing. A college student said this, though, this past week. I was at the 1130 service this morning and watched several members get baptized. Although I was baptized as an infant, I really felt like God was speaking to me and wanted me to stand up there with my brothers and sisters in Christ, committing my life to him. I didn't have the courage to do it, and I'm really wishing I had. I thought I heard that this whole thing would be happening again this next week. Is that true? Well, what, about, what do you guys think? Should we do it again today? It is true. We are going to be baptizing people again today. And if you weren't here last week, or maybe you missed your chance last week, maybe you felt like God was telling you, he was speaking to you and telling you to get out of your chair and to go, and you didn't do it. Well, regardless, we are going to be baptizing people again today. And so if you've missed your chance, I want you to know today is your day. And if God is calling you, if he's speaking to you, don't resist his voice. You need to be obedient and take your next step. But before we do that, we're going to tell you another story about a guy in the Bible who was awakened by God and his life was absolutely changed. And so if you have a Bible, you can turn to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, and if you don't have a Bible, if it's not in a translation you understand very well, we've got Bibles at all of our campuses for free at the back of every worship center. You can go pick one up. It's on us. So Luke chapter 19, and Jesus is headed to Jerusalem here in, in, in Luke chapter 19. He's headed to Jerusalem. He's headed to the cross, knowing full well that he's going to die on the cross to save us from our sins. And so he's headed to Jerusalem, and on the way, he passes through this town called Jericho. And as he's walking through Jericho, there's this man named Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus is a tax collector, and he wants to see Jesus. But here's the thing about the tax collectors. Tax collectors were like the worst of the worst in this day and this time, okay? They were, would collect taxes for the Roman government, but they would take more than what was required, and they would pocket the difference. And so it was basically a form of legalized robbery. But these guys were the worst. I mean, the people hated them. They were the worst sinners. And so this is not the kind of person Zacchaeus was. This is not the kind of person that Jesus should be hanging out with, that he should be talking to, that, that he should be associating himself with, that he should be interested in. This just isn't the kind of person that Jesus should be around. Like Jesus and tax collectors, that kind of sinner, the worst of the worst, they shouldn't go together like they don't mess. They shouldn't. But Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus anyways. In spite of his past, in spite of the bad things that he'd done, the, the horrible things that he'd done, in spite of the, the label that he had really for himself and, and the label that the world, that people had put on him, in spite of all of that, he wanted to see Jesus. But there was a problem for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was very short, and he couldn't see over the crowd. And so as Jesus is passing by, he can't see him. Now, some of you grew up in church, and you sang a song that went like this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he, 
okay? How many of you grew up singing that song, all of our campuses? Okay, you're just like me. You grew up in church, going to Sunday school. You learned that Zacchaeus was a wee little man, okay? So he can't see Jesus. So he's running up ahead of the crowd to get up into this tree. He climbs up into this tree so that he can look down over the crowd and so he can see Jesus, okay? So Luke chapter 19, verse 5, and check it out with me here on the screen. It says, when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and he called him by name. He called him by name. Now, can you imagine how much that would have shocked Zacchaeus? Like Zacchaeus, again, the worst of the worst, an evil sinner with his past, with, with, with his label, with his struggles, with the things that he had messed up, with the things that he had screwed up. In front of everybody, in front of this entire crowd, Jesus calls him out and calls him by name. I mean, imagine what Zacchaeus must have been thinking. Like, this is Jesus. Like, this guy's this famous religious leader. Why, how does he know my name? How does he know my name? Like, it must have made Zacchaeus felt like Jesus knew him. And can you imagine how important he must have felt? Like, in front of all these people, religious people and everybody else, that in front of everybody... Jesus called him out by name. Imagine how important he must have felt. Now, this also would have been, if you could put yourself in Zacchaeus' shoes, this would have been amazing and scary, like all at the same time. Like there would have been this whirlwind like, of emotions and thoughts and feelings. Like if he knows my name, like that means he knows me. Like he knows me. He knows my past. He knows my struggles. He he knows who I am, like he knows I'm a tax collector. And so that would have been amazing that Jesus knows who you are, right? But it would have been scary too, because it would have been like, Jesus, like he knows everything about me too, if he knows my name, like if he knows who I am. Let's check out this next verse. So Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down, I must be a guest in your home today. So not only does Jesus know Zacchaeus, knows his name, but now Zacchaeus has to be thinking, this guy wants to come to my house? Like, he wants to hang out with me? Like, what, what's going on here? Like, I don't deserve this. Like, this isn't a guy that should be interested in me, but he wants to come to my house. It must have made Zacchaeus feel like if, if he's willing to come to my house, if he's willing to hang out with me, it must mean that he accepts me in spite of the terrible things that I've done. Look at this next verse. It says, so Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Let's keep going. Verse 7, it says, But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumble. So people are, the people are upset. And, and who do you think these people are? Do you think it's other sinners are upset? That Zacchaeus is wanting to, or that Jesus is wanting to go to Zacchaeus' home? You think it was the other sinners? Like other people with a past, other people with a label? No, they wouldn't have been upset. In fact, Jesus going to Zacchaeus' house would have brought them a lot of hope. Like if, if Jesus can hang out with Zacchaeus, if Jesus can go to his house, it, it must mean that he would accept us too. Like it must mean that he's interested in us too. So it wouldn't have been other sinners that were upset about this. No, it was the arrogant religious people. They were upset that Jesus would go and hang out with a sinner because they thought a religious leader shouldn't be hanging out with sinners. Like they shouldn't be hanging out with the worst of the worst. They definitely shouldn't be going to their homes. They should be avoiding those types of people. And so the religious leaders were upset, but Jesus didn't care what the religious leaders thought. So check out this next verse. This is what's happening at Zacchaeus' house. It says, meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Four times as much. So obviously, Jesus and Zacchaeus have had some sort of conversation here. I mean, for, some, for something this drastic to take place in Zacchaeus' life... There must have been some conversation here where Jesus is like, listen, man, you're the reason that I came. Like, you're it. You're the reason that I came to give my life on the cross, to die for you, to die for your sin, to take the penalty that you deserve, to pay the price that you deserve to pay. 
That's the reason I came, was to pay the fine for your sin. I came for you, man. And if you commit your life to me, your sin can be forgiven. You can be made right with God, and you can know for sure that when you die, you're going to go to heaven, Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus must have been like, I'm in. Like, I need that. I want that. And his life is obviously immediately and drastically changed. You can tell from what he said here in, in verse 8. He said, man, I'm going to give back everything that I've stolen four times as much. He turned from his sin and he committed his life to Jesus. So look what Jesus says here in this next verse. Jesus responds, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Salvation has come to this man and to his house. Zacchaeus was asleep. He was spiritually dead, spiritually asleep. But God woke him up. God woke him up. He was awakened. And even though Zacchaeus was the worst of the worst, even though Zacchaeus had a past, even though he had messed up big time, even though Zacchaeus had a label kind of for himself and, and a label that everybody else had put on him, salvation came to his house because he was willing to commit his life to Jesus. He was willing to commit his life to Jesus. He was willing to turn from his sin, put his faith in Jesus, and commit his life to Jesus. And Jesus said, salvation is yours. It has come to you. You are acceptable to God now. You have a relationship with God now. And so look at this next verse. Jesus said, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. See, some of you need to hear that today. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter the label that you've put on yourself or, or the label that maybe your family, your friends, or that people have put on you. Doesn't, doesn't matter if you've even come in here today and you're struggling, like your life's a wreck, like it's messed up. It doesn't matter. Salvation can be yours because Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost, those who have sinned, those who have messed up, those with the past, those with a label. He came to seek and to save those who were lost. And so, have you ever felt lost? Or maybe what about today? You feel lost? I want you to know Jesus knows your name. And he came for you. Or maybe you feel like there's no way that, that God could ever forgive you because of the things that you've done. I want you to know, just like Zacchaeus, he knows your name. And he came for you. Or maybe you feel like God could never love me, like with the stuff in my life, with the brokenness in my life, with the, with the past that I've had, with the things that I've done, there's no way that Jesus could ever love me. I want you to know, he knows your name. He came for you. And he loves you so much that he died on the cross to save you from your sin. That's how much he loved you, to give up his own life for you. That's how much he loves you. And so the real question is, Will you respond like Zacchaeus did? Turn from your sin and commit your life to Jesus. See, the Bible says in Romans 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. But you know what the Bible also says? Salvation is not a reward for the good things that you've done. And a lot of us get confused by that. See, a lot of us have been confused thinking, well, if I'm just a good enough person, or if I go to church enough times, or, or maybe if I come forward today and get baptized, like that'll make me right with God. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says salvation is not a reward for the good things that we've done. It's not by being baptized. It's not because you go to church enough times. It's not because you sing the right words, the worship song. It's not because you raise your hands. It's not because of any of those reasons. The Bible says salvation is not a reward for the good things that we've done. Like you're not going to stand before God and because your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, you're going to be acceptable to God. That's not it. The Bible says we're made right with God when we believe in Jesus, when we believe that he sacrificed his life for us, paying the fine for our sin that we owed and commit our life to Jesus. When we make that decision to commit our life to him, your sin is forgiven, you're made right with God, and you can know for sure that when you die, you're going to heaven. And just like Jesus said, you can receive salvation. That can be yours today. 
if you'll respond like Zacchaeus did. And if you're here today and you're like Zacchaeus, you're like, I'm in. Like, that's what I need. That's what I want. I want to challenge you to fill out that connection card. It's at the bottom of the bulletin that you received when you came in at all of our campuses. And on the back of that card, there's a box that says, I'm committing my life to Christ. I want to challenge you, fill out that card, check that box, take it back to the Next Step Center in the foyer of every one of our campuses after today's service. We've got a free gift for you just to help you in your new relationship with Jesus. So if that's you, you're like Zacchaeus, I'm in, that's what I need, that's what I want. I want you to know Jesus knows your name and he came for you. Now here's what would have happened right after Zacchaeus committed his life to Christ. He would have gone public and gotten baptized. And we know that because in Acts 2, Peter's preaching the gospel to thousands of people, thousands of people. And it said, the crowd responds with, well, what must we do to be saved? And Peter says, repent of your sin and get baptized. And then here's what Acts chapter 2 says. It says, Peter said, repent of your sin and get baptized. And everyone who believed got baptized that day. About 3,000 people in all. That day, like not another day, like not next week, not when, you know, I could go get the right clothes on or not when I could go, you know, gather this group of people or whatever. They got baptized that day to publicly tell the world we're followers of Jesus Christ. We've committed our life to him. They got baptized that day. And for some of you, that day is today. That day is today. Like today needs to be the day that you take your next step. And you go public with your relationship with Jesus and get baptized. Now, there's two groups of people that need to get baptized today. The first group is those that are committing their life to Christ today. Like today, you're like Zacchaeus and you're saying, I'm in. I'm committing my life to Jesus. If that's you, how amazing would it be to get baptized on the same day that you committed your life to Jesus? Just like in the book of Acts. People were getting saved and then they would get baptized same day. How amazing would that be? Wouldn't that be an incredible experience life for those that committed their life to Christ today to go forward and get baptized? That would be absolutely amazing. And so that's the first group of people that need to get baptized. The second group of people that need to get baptized are those that have committed their life to Christ, but they haven't been baptized since making that decision. Now, we say that because the Bible teaches, we believe the Bible teaches that baptism is a public declaration of a new association. It's a public declaration of a new association. Like when you get baptized, you're saying to the world, I've committed my life to Christ. And so that's why we say you need to get baptized after committing your life to Jesus because that's the example, like that's the model in the New Testament. You commit your life to Jesus and then you get baptized. And so if you haven't been baptized since making that decision to follow Jesus, we want to challenge you to get baptized today. Now, today is going to be for our middle school students and up, unless your child has completed our kid faith class, because we want to make sure our kids understand the gospel and they understand baptism. And so middle school and up, unless your kids have completed our kid faith class. But I want you to know, for many of you here today, you feel God speaking to you, telling you, today's your day, now's your time. And I want you to know, you can experience the same joy that you heard in the stories that we talked about earlier. You can experience that same joy if you will be bold and obedient to take your next step and get baptized. Now, I know many of you are here and you're like, okay, I would get baptized, but like, I'm, you don't get it. I'm afraid. Like, I'm afraid to be up in front of people. I'm afraid to have to talk in front of people. Well, here's the thing. You're not going to have to say anything but yes, okay? We ask every single person, if you committed your life to Jesus, the only thing you have to say is yes. And if you don't want to say yes, you can just nod, okay? You can just nod. And here's the other thing I want you to know, though. Jesus publicly died on the cross for you. Like he was crucified publicly for you in front of people. So surely we can go public with our relationship with Jesus and get baptized telling the world that we love Jesus and we're excited about Jesus and we're proud of Jesus. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed of Jesus. We're proud of Jesus and what he's done for us. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said this. He said, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. 
Think about how amazing that is. That one day if we've acknowledged Jesus before men, that Jesus will acknowledge you before his Father in heaven. That's an incredible thought. Some of you may be afraid, well, you know, the person baptizing me is probably going to hold me under too long, okay? And, and they could, you know. So just be nice to them, and, and maybe they'll, they'll bring you up, you know, quick. Or maybe you're afraid that people are going to think that you're weird. And I'd say, no, I, I think they're going to think that you love Jesus, that you're excited about Jesus, that you're proud of Jesus, that you're not ashamed of Jesus. That's what they're going to think. And then really, who cares what people think anyways, right? The Bible says we're supposed to be God-pleasers, not men-pleasers. So people aren't going to think that you're weird. Maybe you'd say, oh, I get baptized, but my first baptism was good enough. And I would say, I agree with you, unless it wasn't after you committed your life to Jesus. Why don't we let the Bible help us decide whether or not our baptism was good enough? Because the Bible teaches that you get baptized as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ. Maybe you say, I get baptized, but my family's not here. Well, we've got photographers and videographers at all of our campuses. They're going to take your picture. They're going to get to take the video. The video is going to be available on our website for you and your family to watch. We're going to have printed pictures for free for you to pick up at all of our campuses next week. And the file will also be available on our website for you to download. And you can print as many times as you want and give it out to all of your family members. So we're going to have photographers and, and videographers here to capture that moment for you so that you can share it with your family. Or maybe you'd say, I get baptized, but like, I don't know what to wear. Like, I, you know, you don't understand. I got to go to lunch after this. You know, we're going to, you know, Chili's or, you know, Applebee's or, you know, wherever. And uh, I, can't, I can't go, you know, with my clothes all wet. Well, here's the thing. We came ready for you to get baptized. You may not have, but we came ready. And so we've got everything that you could possibly need. We've got a free dunked at eLife t-shirt that we're going to give to you. We've got shorts. We've got underwear, not the one that we, stuff that we used last week. We didn't just dry it, you know, and, and kind of put it, package it back for you. It's all brand new. Sports bras for the ladies, everything that you could possibly need. Towels, dressing rooms, plastic bags for storing things, mirrors, hairspray, gel, deodorant. We've got brushes, lotion, hair dryers, and curling irons irons for the ladies. Um, we've got hair ties and rubber bands, face wash, washcloths, Q-tips, and we have even got at all of our campuses feminine hygiene products, okay? Now, here's the thing. We had guys that went and checked out with hundreds of those things, okay? Can you imagine guys standing in line with hundreds of feminine hygiene products, okay? Do you imagine the looks that they got checking out with all of this stuff? I mean, they must have thought these dudes were crazy, okay? But that's how committed we are to helping make sure that there are no excuses. No excuses. Today's your day. And so we're going to pray and ask for God to fill us with his Holy Spirit, to fill us with boldness so that we can get up here in just a second, leave our chair, walk down our road, head to the back of every worship center at all of our campuses, get changed and come and get baptized. Today's your day. Don't let this moment pass you by. Let's pray and ask God to help us. God, we thank you for those that are committing their life to Christ today. God, for those who are being awakened even now and that are receiving salvation. And God, we pray for boldness. God, that as we stand up at all of our campuses here in just a second, God, I pray that your spirit would move in power and that you would fill every person with boldness and that those that you're speaking to, God, right now, wouldn't resist your voice, they wouldn't resist the Holy Spirit speaking to them, but you'd fill them with boldness to make their way out of their row, to head to the back, to go get changed and get baptized because we love you, Jesus. We're proud of you, Jesus. We're not ashamed of you. We're thankful and we want to acknowledge you before men. So Jesus, fill us right now with boldness. Help us to be obedient to your call, to your voice right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. If you made a decision to commit your life to Christ, I'd love to know about it. You can email me at chris at experiencelifenow.com. Also, if you're interested in taking a next step, check out our website at experiencelifenow.com and click on Next Steps.
Let us know if we can ever serve you in any way, and we look forward to seeing you soon.